Hey guys, welcome to this episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. And this episode, we're diving in because you're seeing on the news, on social media, friends are talking about it, family's talking about it. Everything feels like it's going crazy. And the global economy, it has a big question mark. So we're gonna dive into that on this episode. So crazy things are happening on, I feel like all over the world. So whether it's conflict, financial trouble, shortages, all of it, it doesn't just affect that region of the world, it affects the entire globe. The global economy means that our finances are impacted here in the US. And stick around to the end because I'm gonna give you some tips on what to do and what not to do when your money and the economy feels so unstable. So you probably know a lot of retailers and other big companies have completely pulled back and stopped business in Russia because of their conflict with the Ukraine. And we're talking about huge corporations like Apple, Nike, Ikea, Netflix, Disney, Starbucks, American Airlines, Exxon, Shell, Goldman Sachs, and most of the major tech companies and a whole lot more. So the US has placed sanctions on Russia's central bank and immobilized the reserves it held in the US financial system. So the US has also banned the import of Russian oil, natural gas, and coal into the US. And those are just some of the high level highlights of what is currently being sanctioned because of the conflict. So. What are sanctions? What does that mean? Well, sanctions are commercial and financial penalties that one country puts on another country to have them to stop acting aggressively or break international laws. And so we're doing all of that right against Russia because of what they're doing to Ukraine. And we're doing that hoping that it hurts the Russian economy and so that they back off. And if enough countries do it, you want that pressure on that country. But the sanctions in Russia create a lot of downsides for the global economy as well. So for example, there's reduced exports of food and important agricultural related goods that lead to higher food costs for us. Like bread, for instance, a lot of grain, a lot of wheat comes from Russia. And so now you look at our bread prices because we're not getting that from them and our prices go up, up, up. And sanctions may also lower corporate profits in the US and Europe, partly because of the rising energy costs and technology firms that have pulled out of Russia. So how do consumers like us feel the impact? Well, this is where inflation comes into play, which we are all seeing. And the current inflation that we're facing right now, yes, has to do with Russia and the Ukraine, all of that. But also guys, we're coming out of a pandemic. So it's kind of like the perfect storm. So the supply chain challenges and shortages that companies are facing cause prices to go up, which means we pay more, which means our wallets, our bank accounts, our budgets, we all feel it. But there's also a possibility that countries who are receiving the money that was being directed to towards Russia, not anymore, so the money's now being directed other places, those countries may actually see their economies grow. And it's more likely that some of the foreign money that would have flowed into Russia is gonna come back to the US instead, which is a good thing. But we can only make predictions on what will happen because we don't know. We don't know the future. We don't have a crystal ball. And the reality is no one knows how this crisis is gonna escalate, where it's gonna go from here. And I know a lot of people are concerned and they're anxious about the future, which is totally understandable. But we have to take a deep breath and think about what we can control right now. We don't wanna just sit here and fear wringing our hands on things that we have no power over. So again, focusing on what you can control because we can't change the fact that prices will go up, prices will go down, scary things are happening all over the world. But again, we can control our money habits, we can control the money that flows in from our income, and all those things are so, so important to focus on. So when things are uncertain like this, do not pull money out of retirements, Okay, don't freak out and watch. Remember, your retirements, your investments are for the long term. Stay in it. Also, do not panic and buy and overspend on stuff that you don't need just because you're freaked out. Also, don't be so paralyzed in fear that you refuse to buy anything. If it's in the budget, it's okay. You can still live. Also, do not just throw your budget out the window and be like, oh my gosh, what's the world coming to? I'm gonna just do whatever I want. No, no, don't do that. Also, don't put all of your money in cryptocurrency or other trendy investments because you're scared. 
Don't use credit cards as a form of security, thinking, oh, this thing, this is gonna save me in the long term. Okay, so, so just focus again on what you can control. So, stay calm. Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? Calm. Make sure that you have an emergency fund in place. If you do not have cash saved, whether it's your starter emergency fund of $1,000, or if you're out of debt and you have your fully funded emergency fund, make sure you have cash. So if something happens, or when something happens, you have money. Also, stay on top of your budget. If you are not someone that's very intentional with where your money goes, this is the time to do it, okay? We're all feeling it, inflation, everything going on. Control your income, and the best way to do that is with a budget. Also, if you're kind of feeling, you know, the budget, and you're like, oh my gosh, like we're spending a lot on groceries, a lot on gas, the margin we used to have, we don't have anymore, Look around your house and sell stuff. It's amazing the amount of stuff we have in our homes that we do not use. Sell it and make some cash. Even downsize or downgrade if you need to on anything, whether it's a home or a car, if it's something that you're like, wow, I am living way above my means, you may have to make some big calls to say, okay, what can I do to lower, whether it's payments and sell a car, or even if your house payment, you guys, is like 40, 50% of your take-home pay, you have too much house, so some big changes may need to be made. Also make sure that you have things like health insurance, you have a will. These are really important things to have. Also, I would say keep investing. If you are completely debt-free and you have your fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses, which that's baby steps one through three, if that's covered, keep investing. Don't stop, don't freak out. Trust me, over the long term, because of compound interest, you're going to want to be investing. Also get help if you need it, okay? So if these basic things of personal finance, whether it's budgeting or investing or saving, getting out of debt and you're like, oh, I'm overwhelmed, I'm confused, then have someone in your corner who can help you. You can use a financial advisor. I would say take a Financial Peace University class. Whatever you need to do to get the information you need, do it. Okay, so much is going on again. I feel like there can be a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty, but remember to control what you can control. And so that's gonna be your mindset, that's gonna be your habits, that's gonna be what you put inside of your brain. So if you sit there and watch the news 24 seven, probably gonna go crazy. So just watch what you're doing, watch what you are putting in your brain, because that's eventually gonna come out somewhere. So be wise about it. I don't want you to just put your head in the sand. I want you to be educated and know what's going on. But I also don't want fear and things, again, that you can't control affect your daily joy in living life. I don't want you to be paralyzed by fear. So there's a lot of peace in life when you say, okay, here are things over here that I just have no say over. I can't change that. I can't do that. So I'm not gonna worry about that. What are things that I can control? And I'm gonna focus my time and my energy on that. That, you guys, is how you have peace when it comes to your money and your life. Because remember, I want you to take control of your money and create a life you love. <laughs>